Hello, in this video I'm going to overview EdgeVPN and its applications. EdgeVPN is an open source, software-defined overlay virtual network that is used for edge computing. Edge computing technologies in many ways complement cloud computing. Whereas in the cloud you can run large elastic workloads in large-scale data centers, edge computing pushes computation towards the edge of the network, where you can reduce the bandwidth needs reduce the latency and also enforce privacy. Here's one example of a use case for edge computing. Suppose you have a large number of cameras distributed across multiple sites and you'd like to do classification using artificial intelligence. With edge computing, you could run the AI workloads near the cameras, near the sensors and the IoT devices and offloading that computation so data doesn't all have to be transferred to the cloud data center. You can also anonymize information near the edge. Still, at the cloud, you aggregate information and you coordinate your workload. Now, there are many reasons why virtual private networks are useful in edge computing. With edge computing, you have multiple providers in multiple networks, and you can have private addresses and firewalls and network address translation. A virtualization layer allows applications and platforms to abstract away the presence of these network middle boxes and present an interface that allows existing applications and middleware to run without any modifications, for example, containers and Kubernetes container orchestration. A virtual private network also allows flexible workload management, whereas you may have a workload that exceeds the capacity of a local edge and needs to be offloaded to a nearby edge computing system. So it allows for greater flexibility in the placement and migration of workloads and uh, their containers. It also allows you to enforce privacy and integrity in all the communications that happen between components that together form a distributed edge computing environment. Without a virtual private network, a developer or deployer of an edge infrastructure needs to worry about different network namespaces and crossing firewalls and nets. That creates significant challenges to deploy, coordinate, and communicate among the edge devices that form a platform. With a virtual private network, you have a single virtual address space. You can reuse existing software, you can reuse existing applications, and that facilitates greatly the deployment of edge computing systems. EdgeVPN.io, or EVO for short, provides this virtual network. It's an open source VPN software with the MIT license that is tailored to edge computing applications. It's a software defined network, requires no specialized hardware, and it provides virtualization at the Ethernet layer, allowing existing applications that use TCP IP to run unmodified. A virtual Ethernet adapter is provided and it works with a physical host, virtual machines, or Docker containers. You can run IP, TCP, UDP, unicast, or multicast on top of this platform without any modifications. EVO is unique in how it creates an overlay network where all the links in the network are encrypted and authenticated. And this overlay itself is self-organizing, requires no management of the links, and it creates a scalable topology that supports uh, scalable edge computing applications. It also hides the complexity of dealing with private addresses, firewalls, and traversing nets. With EVO, you can run this virtual private network that allows you, for example, to run a Kubernetes cluster distributed across cloud and edge computing systems. Every node in this virtual cluster has a virtual private address on the EVO namespace, and computers across the cluster are able to communicate with each other privately without having to worry about traversing nets and firewalls and dealing with dynamic membership of nodes that are added or removed to the virtual network. Now, how is an EVO virtual network deployed? You need to have a bootstrapping node that allows you to define who is a member of the virtual network and for nodes to authenticate with. It also is helpful to assist in creating tunnels that traverse nets across the internet. This bootstrapping node is typically deployed on the cloud, for example, Amazon Web Services. Then every node that participates in the Edge VPN runs the EVO software, and they become VPN endpoints in this network. As nodes join and leave the network, the overlay self-configures to aggregate more nodes or remove nodes uh, that are no longer participating in the computation 
in uh, the overlay. So we start with a Cloud Bootstrapping node, and it has a list of all the nodes that are authorized to join this VPN. You can use user IDs and passwords, or you can use X509 certificates to authenticate with a bootstrapping service. The bootstrapping service also runs stun and turn servers that assist in the process of net traversal. But here we have two nodes, node one and node two, with uh, the shown private IP addresses, and they start the process of joining the network by authenticating with a bootstrapping service. Once authenticated, these nodes can use the cloud bootstrapping to send short messages that allow them to exchange information to handshake, the endpoints that they need to communicate with, as well as fingerprints that are used to create uh, encrypted TLS tunnel between them. EdgeVPN uses a P2P communication library called WebRTC to create tunnels between peers in this network. And these tunnels are encrypted and allows for communication to go between nodes one and two without going through the cloud bootstrapping node. Once more nodes start joining the network, EVO self-organizes them into a scalable structured P2P topology. This allows nodes that belong to the same VPN to communicate with each other, regardless of whether they have a direct link to each other. In this example, node one and node two can communicate directly through a tunnel, whereas node one and node N connect indirectly through a hop in the overlay. The self-organizing overlay provides a foundation for communication, but we still have to worry about how do we move packets from one node to another. EVO uses a software-defined network, or SDN, technique to dynamically program switching rules across this fabric. The SDN switches allow, for example, a message that comes from node one to hop through an intermediary node and be delivered to node N. These rules are implemented in a OpenFlow uh, enabled software defined switch called OpenV switch that runs in every node. And these rules are automatically added by EVO without any administration intervention as nodes participate in the network. Not only is the topology self organizing and self configuring, but also the switching rules in this overlay network also self organizing and self configuring. So to recap, the EVO architecture builds on a centralized bootstrapping service that uses the XMPP standard for messaging and stun and turn and ICE for net traversal. It creates encrypted internet tunnels between endpoints and then organizes these nodes into an overlay peer-to-peer -peer that is scalable and self-organizing. And then it layers uh, the software-defined switching to allow packets uh, to move from one node to another. So let's look into uh, these architectural components in more detail. So bootstrapping uses an XMPP server, a server that uses the XMPP protocol to authenticate nodes into the network and also to send short messages to signal that a node has joined the network or has left the network and to request or initiate uh, the connection using the ICE protocol. Then stun and turn servers are used to create peer-to-peer -peer links between nodes. Stun allows you to traverse nets by using a technique that's uh, normally called hole punching. And this works for nets that are cone nets. And that allows peer-to-peer -peer connection between two nodes without going through any third party. Some nets and firewalls may not support uh, this type of hole punching and EVO supports a different style of net traversal called turn, which uses a relay between two peers. The process of creating stun or turn links is completely transparent to the user of EVO. That process is managed automatically by the EVO software. A node can authenticate with the XMPP server with a username and password or with an X509 certificate. It locates other nodes using XMPP messages and then exchange fingerprint information as well as the endpoints, uh, either the stun endpoints or the turn endpoints to allow the creation of P2P tunnel. For all this, we leverage the WebRTC open source libraries that provide this capability. 
WebRTC is typically used for audio video communication between browsers, but EVO uses WebRTC to provide virtual networking capabilities. Once nodes form a topology, the topology follows an approach that is a structured peer-to-peer -peer network based on the Symfony protocol. So nodes have unique identifiers and the identifiers are ordered in successive uh, IDs in a way that allows for the network to be routable. Typically, a node will have a constant number of successors, for example, one or two, and then we'll have log n, where n is the size of the network, long distance links in green in this figure. Furthermore, they will create on-demand links uh, in blue in this example that respond to traffic demands. Successor and long distance links together allow the network to be scalable. You, can, you only have log n um, links per node, but the network allows for a path on average between any two nodes to also be log n. On-demand responds again to traffic. So if nodes in this example one and three communicate a lot, EVO automatically triggers the creation of an on-demand link that allows direct communication between ID1 and ID3 without a hop in between. Let's dive deeper into how packets are actually switched uh, within EVO. So we have now an overlay and links peer-to-peer uh, -peer tunnels across the internet are created between these nodes. Now EVO runs a software switch, an OpenV switch in every node. And these switches learn the path for a message, for example, between uh, node one and node n in this case, by using the ARP protocol. The ARP protocol allows a broadcast, an overlay broadcast, and learning of the path from a node to another node. As part of learning this path, the uh, software B switches are programmed to create a flow that takes us from node one to node n through an intermediary link in a way that's completely automated and self-configuring. Every pairwise communication has its own rules in the network, allowing us to use all possible links in the network without having loops. And these rules are managed dynamically as nodes join and leave the network without, again, any uh, administrative action. The network also supports overlay multicast and broadcast for messages like ARP. Let's look into how EVO is actually implemented. EVO leverages a wealth of existing software, open source software. For example, for the Cloud Bootstrap, we reuse the OpenFire XMPP server and stun turn servers, for example, CoTurn. And these can all be deployed on a web service like Amazon or Azure or Google Engine. For the EVO nodes, we reuse also the open source WebRTC libraries to create the P2P links. We bind these P2P links to virtual network interfaces, TAP devices. The TAP devices allow applications to use EVO by using sockets, for example, and in a way that's transparent to the applications. For the overlay topology and routing, we use a controller, an overlay controller written in Python. And then this overlay controller also uh, communicates with an SDN controller, which sits on top of OpenV switch and programs the forwarding rules automatically in the software defined switches. So zooming in into an EVO node, we have the modules, the TinCan module, which is responsible for communication between peers, the TAP devices, which terminate every peer to peer link. And we have the overlay controller, which communicates with the bootstrapping service to create and manage links. And we have the SDN controller, which programs the forwarding rules of every OpenV switch. Note that there is no single centralized controller in this architecture. Every node has its own controller for the overlay and the SDN. This allows the system to scale. The only component that's centralized here is a bootstrapping service that's only needed for short communication that's needed to bootstrap peer-to-peer -peer links. Once the links are bootstrapped, all the communication and all the control is decentralized, allowing the system to scale without user intervention in the administration of the whole overlay. So putting this all together, let me go through a quick example of using EVO 
for Kubernetes deployment across edge nodes. Kubernetes is a framework that allows flexible workload deployment orchestration using container-based pods. What EVO allows is Kubernetes to work unmodified on clusters that may span across multiple cloud and edge sites. Without changes to Kubernetes, we present the abstraction of nodes being the same network, and then you can run Kubernetes components and deploy pods and connect these pods together using a technique uh, that already exists for Kubernetes called Flano, which is itself an overlay that works uh, without modifications on top of EVO. We have another video and documentation on our website that shows how you can go through uh, this process on your own, but essentially deployment of Kubernetes of a cloud at sites uses a bootstrapping service that allows you to bootstrap Kubernetes nodes, a master node and worker nodes. Each node gets a private address in the EVO address space. Once you bootstrap your Kubernetes cluster, you're able to use it to deploy pods. Pods also have uh, virtual private addresses that communicate over the Flannel overlay namespace. All of this is done transparently to the applications running in the pods and also to the Kubernetes middleware that's running in your nodes. Nodes can join and leave the cluster dynamically and EVO reconfigures the network appropriately as this process continues. We'd like to acknowledge the funding that helps support the research and development of Edge VPN and to invite you to give it a try and let us know if edgevpn.io is useful to you. Thanks for listening and have a good day.